About 10 years ago, I, I bought a place on one of the Bay Islands, on Lamb Island, in the Southern Lorton Bay, while still working at my studio in inner city Brisbane. I come and go to the island about once a week for a few days. And naturally it's very visually interesting over there and I immediately, almost like as a relief from my city studio activities, started going out in the garden and down and further into the forests and down into the mangroves and doing pastels. And I didn't really then come back to the, to the city and do any major works about the island as such. It was almost like it, it was an artistic getaway as well as a um, lifestyle one. Once I had this place on the island, I found that the first drawings and pastels I did were sort of from the house down there looking out to the big gum trees like this one. And gum trees have never been like toffee apple tree shapes as we used to call them. In fact, if you draw, look at gum trees long enough as every second artist in Australia has done, um, sooner or later you see they're not even just organic forms. You can even see rectangular squares and right angles even in them. From the gum trees I went to the she oak forest and then down to the mangroves and back through the garden. So I've moved around and it's all, all my work here was done outdoors. Although I didn't do any paintings back in my city studio relating to the quite beautiful visual uh, landscape of, of the island and the bay. I did find that the pastels I was working on over there and the compositions and the colours and different structures were starting to feed back into the works of totally different subjects I was doing in town. Uh, and nowhere more than here in the mangroves where I'd come and uh, I used to even keep an eye on the tide times and everything in those days and I'd come and draw the incoming tide and the whole fracture and mixed up components of the tidal mangrove seemed to give all sorts of construction ideas for paintings of other things I was doing in town. It's quite a complicated set of components and I realised as probably any artist from Claude Monet to Dave Paulson who's taken on painting water, is at first when you look at water you just see water, but after, uh, after you've drawn it or painted it for about 10 seconds you realise that really what you're looking at visually is defined by all the slabs of light and the shadows and reflections and the ridges of uh, sand and mud on the bottom that you see through the transparent water. And my pastel drawings of this kind of complex spatial pattern, if you like, 3D pattern, I realised started to inform these big interior paintings I was contemplating doing back in the city. And it's as though doing the pastels had provided the sort of missing link or a hidden door into how to do these other paintings that I'd walked around with in my head for years thinking about doing them. These paintings were very much based on what happens at night in the house when you turn all the lights down. There might be one night light and you get shafts of light, big beast shaped looming shadows and pieces of your stuff poking through. And these night interiors, I found the way to deal with that spatial pattern. I got ideas from drawing the mangroves. Meanwhile, uh, when I'd worked from gum trees and the forest things, that fitted pretty well with a long series of paintings I was doing through the last 10 years of uh, billboards seen along the road and things along the road because I used to drive around a lot with my paintings and so forth. And my billboard paintings, so-called, were not about the advertising side of billboards but about the negative shapes of their shabby rear sides or the blank fronts when they don't have a sign. But, of course, in doing them, I had to use all sorts of landscape ideas to situate them in. And I found that some of the gum tree works 
I'd done on the island were helping me form those landscapes. So that was another way that the thing was feeding back and forth. Meanwhile, in the pastels, they were all done on sheets of paper that over the years, even without knowing what I wanted to do exactly with the papers, I, when, when you wash out your oil painting brushes, all the sediment colour goes to the bottom of the mineral turps. And if you let it sit for a week or so, it settles and you can pour the now quite clear turps off and there is left this grey sediment. And if you've been using a lot of red, it's a pinkish grey, and if you've been using a lot of yellow, it's a yellowish grey, and so on. And I found that I prepared these sheets of paper because I really liked the, the material of that oil paint sediment. I'll waste a lot of material throwing it into paintings, but I hate throwing anything away that isn't thrown into a painting. And, and eventually I realised this: the, what I painted these papers with was a perfect matte sympathetic base to do pastels on. And so, in the pastel works I was doing on the island, I was doing them all on sediment from painting these big paintings in town, so it was like a two-way street. After about five years, um, it's always like that with me with painting subjects, even these interiors I'm talking about doing, I thought about for years since I have even lived in different houses and then finally got around to doing them. But I found that, I found a subject about my comings and going to the island that I did some paintings about. And hence I produced a show in uh, 2010 called uh, Islands in the, in the Bay. But of course there were no painting of actual islands in the, in the show. It was all the groups of people and individual people you see sitting on the, the decks at the back of the, of the water ferries that I take weekly to get over there. And you notice that these island people, as they sit on the boat, uh, everyone's friendly, say hello to each other, but sooner or later they all sort of huddle in groups and in a way become islands of, little islands of humanity. And all the, the blaze of light and sun and sky and wake churning up of the boat behind them becomes not unlike the water swilling through the mangroves and amongst the mangrove trees and around the logs and around old car tyres and all these things that get washed up on boats. So once again, my pastels on the island were giving me a way to paint this subject of the people on the boats. It was a very good metaphor, I thought, this island of people because in a way it symbolised the way people huddle together in groups everywhere in society. And uh, in a way uh, they make contact, but then they isolate themselves. That was the kind of uh, human tableau idea I got from travelling on the boats. Probably the most recent pastels I've used in this forthcoming exhibition at Redland Bay uh, City Art Gallery. I've gone back to an idea I'm always interested in where, although I've never been an artist who kind of paints pictures well, uh, like painting to music in the sense that I put some uh, you know, uh, uh, evocative music on in the studio and then paint from its rhythms and its, its uh, moods or even its lyrics. I don't do that, well, at, least, at least not since I was a teenage kid in the 60s where you couldn't help paint pictures from Beatles lyrics. I mean, that was just unavoidable. But I've never been a person who painted from music as such. But I have always enjoyed the two-way street of relating to music in painting through composition and structures and phrasing and intervals is the uh, words that keep coming in my head. And when you look out into a, a gum tree forest in the slanting afternoon sun, it picks up on different trees and suddenly you realise that the sun is playing a kind of a riff from a rock song, you know, or the start of a Handel aria, you know, like uh, da 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 and so on, and these sort of uh, classic phrases from Handel and Beethoven start, you start reading them out of trees and of course it's a very good thing then to translate onto the sketchbook.
I'm looking again at how the pastels I do on the island influence my works in town because I'm uh, shortly doing an exhibition at Redlands Regional Art Gallery which uh, focuses on this idea of what I do in the Redlands uh, uh, Bay and how it influences my work in town. But also, uh, in the meantime, the Redlands Regional Gallery has acquired a painting of mine I suppose something inevitably I did of the, the big sand hill on Stradbroke Island, which has resulted in the mining thing there. And that, for me, is a landscape that shows a great impact between like a man-made element and supernature. Well, it's very beautiful down here on the bay this morning. The water's very clean because it hasn't rained for a while. And over there, of course, is Stradbroke and the distinctive sand hill uh, and the island I've used in a painting which the Redland Art Gallery has in its collection. And for all the back and forth of politics about the mining on the island, uh, it does create a very interesting meeting of a man-made element in a natural landscape. Well, whilst I've been assembling these works, looking forward to this exhibition shortly, um, I think my uh, back and forth to the island and back and forth in the works between pastels and working outdoors on the island and what I'm doing, the city studio uh, will continue for a long time, uh, almost inevitably. And I maybe at some stage will even do some paintings on the island. but. I know and I've thought a lot about the island thing, very nice runaway, everything like that. But I think even as I get older, I sort of, I like to have that, but I kind of need that city thing pulsing away in, in the background, in my side vision. Even though I don't use the city as such, I think I'm always going to be an artist that sort of has at least one foot in the society.